Hey guys, Ash here and welcome to episode 17 of Android Tips on Curse for Our TV. In the last three episodes, we've been taking a look at the best launches that Android has to offer. And we've got more exciting launches lined up for you this episode. So let's pick up where we left off. Launcher number 10 on the list. This is Action Launcher Pro. Action Launcher Pro is a pretty smooth launcher. It's really uh, fast and stable and uh, doesn't really lag. It's smooth. Uh, it is a different take on a, a stock Android experience. It it, it kind of resembles stock with stock icons and uh, a stock flavor, but with a few noticeable tweaks. So the first one is swipe from the left at any time, and you get an app. Uh, your apps listed. You don't get an app drawer. So this gives you all your apps listed uh, alphabetically, and you can also scroll this way so that you can quickly jump to certain letters. Tap and hold anywhere and that gives you your app draw. Over here you can select an app and if needed find it on Play, uh, Play Store. And you can uninstall it from here if needed. You can also get information for the app and uh, uninstall it from here as well. Uh, or you can just touch and pull it into your home screens. Again, you also get your widgets from uh, widgets over here. Everything is listed uh, in a vertical page, scrollable, similarly with the apps as well. And you can also access your wallpapers. So um, just keep swiping and at the end of the last, uh, uh, last page, you just swipe and you get your app list. But no matter what page you're on, you can still swipe from the left edge and get your app list. So... Uh, an alternative option would be to uh, hit this button over here and get the app list. You also have quick access to the Play Store and you've got a dock, uh, dock below. Uh, this launcher does something different with icons, folders and widgets. So every, uh, every app that actually has a widget has these three lines below. This is the shutter option. So what this does is just tap on the app and it opens the app for you. Instead, you just swipe over the app, it launches the widget. So this is an easier way to launch widgets without having the widget take, uh, take, uh, take space on your screen. So say for example the music app, uh, I mean widgets like Flipboard, yes you need it on your screen so that you can keep track of what's happening. But say the music app, you don't need it on your screen all the time. Uh, you know, unless and until you, you want to listen to music, you really don't need it. So that's an easy way to save some space on the screen while retaining functionality. And again, it also does something different with folders. Let's create a folder. Just drag and drop an icon on top of another and you create a folder. So now we have a folder with four icons inside. So over here you can just tap and name the folder. Let's name it test. And uh, there is another thing that you can do. So just tap this three dot menu over here and hit make cover. So what this does is it makes the first icon in your folder uh, as the cover. And you get a small box below indicating that it is actually a folder with a cover. So now if just tap on this and it opens the uh, app on top, so camera in this case. Or you can just swipe and it gives you the folder. So if you don't want this, if you want it to go back to being a normal folder, tap the three dot menu, hit make folder again and it's back to normal. This is especially useful in cases like this. So say for example, this is contact called test who I call a lot. So once I create a folder, I can just set text, uh, test as the primary icon and hit make cover. So now every time, you know, if test is the contact I call a lot, I just tap this and uh, the test gets dialed. Or rather, I don't have a SIM on the phone right now. Or if you just want to access the normal call, I mean normal phone, uh, phone app, just swipe above and select phone. Let's quickly open up the menu. So customize takes you to your app, pro I mean list of apps, widgets and wallpapers. Uh, system settings takes you uh, to your system settings, obviously. Manage apps quickly, I mean, uh, let you jump into application manager and settings takes you uh, to Action Pro launcher settings. So over here you've got display wherein you can select the number of home screen pages with uh, the default home screen. You can change the grid dimensions. It's by default set at 4x4. Four four. You can make it up to 5x6. And then the option of turning on uh, text labels or turning them off, enabling or disabling the dock. Again, the current width, as in the number of uh, icons you can list in the dock, a maximum of six. 
doc separator page indicator uh, which page you are in that is a that is the little uh, okay let me show you this is the page indicator the blue uh, coloring on the line all right going back to settings uh, you also have an option uh, to ha hide some apps from your app draw so apps that you don't use regularly uh, if you aren't rooted and you have some system apps or uh, bloatware from your uh, network provider you can just hide it over here so that it doesn't uh, clutter up your app I mean app list uh, you can also import stuff from your existing launcher so on this phone I currently have TouchWiz and Apex launcher so I can import stuff from there uh, you also have some experimental features that is uh, the shutters or cover widgets and uh, landscape mode Action Launcher Pro is also very easy on RAM usage consuming less than 20 MB of RAM at most times this is a pretty sweet launcher, really fast and smooth, and uh, it's got quite a few innovative features. So go ahead, get it from the Play Store. The direct link is in the description, so check it out, guys. So the next launcher on the list is SF Launcher. SF Launcher is kind of inspired by uh, Google Now, as in you have different cards and a header on top. So how it works is uh, this is a swipeable area for uh, widgets. And this is where you have, uh, you can add uh, apps you like, your favorite apps. Swipe to the right and you get your app draw. And swipe to the left again, left uh, end and you get your settings. It's pretty simple. So how do you add apps over here? You can select an app and hit add favorite. Or you can select an app and hit uninstall. So, I mean, system apps cannot be uh, uninstalled, but just... Uh, uh, any other app that you've installed you can uninstall it from there so let's see what settings uh, SF Launcher has to offer okay first you've got themes you have a light theme a dark theme and auto how that works is this is the dark theme if you select auto it changes as per the time so in the day it remains on light uh, I mean it uses the light theme and in the night it switches over to the dark theme uh, tapping the header by default takes you to Google Now uh, going into settings you can change this so uh, go into header, header and themes actions header action and you can select any of this and uh, header long press again you can select an option so tapping and holding on the header you can have it do something else and tapping on the clock on the header you can uh, you can select it to perform a certain action long pressing the clock tapping date and long pressing the date so that's uh, quite a lot of customization there and uh, then you have the start times. So this basically tells your phone when your dawn starts, when day starts, dusk and night starts, so that the image on the header can uh, change accordingly. And this is the header height, how big you want your header to be. So let's just uh, turn it on a little bit, and that is how it looks. You also have your clock and date options, where you can change the text color for uh, dawn, day, dusk and night, the text size. Uh, for the clock and the dates and city is just the header that you see uh, you've got again uh, from the time this uh, launcher was in alpha right now it's in beta so a lot of changes have happened you've, you they've added a lot of cities hope to see more soon so let's just select generic for now uh, so that's the hills that you find with uh, Generic is kind of similar to uh, Google Now. And then you have widgets. So this uh, this is the panel height. So you increase it and go back. You can see the widget panel takes up a lot more space now. And then you've got favorites. So over here you can decide the number of columns, uh, the icon sizes, uh, whether you need to, whether you want the favorite, uh, favorite apps to have labels, uh, app labels below them. And if you decide to have app labels, the text size. So let me just have get one line of app labels. Okay, and a text size of six. So that is how they look. You have the same options for the app list as well. So in the app list, the number of columns to be displayed, the icon size, the label lines, uh, and the text size uh, for the labels. You also have SF Launcher Plus available from the Play Store. What SF Launcher Plus does is it lets you add custom icons 
and themes uh, and uh, the developer plans to add a lot more options so again ADW theme should be compatible with this so that's SF, SF Launcher Plus and then you have an option to restart SF Launcher and it doesn't really RAM hungry either at max it ends up consuming about 30-35 MB of RAM so that's SF Launcher for you the next launcher on the list is Apex Launcher Apex Launcher again gives you a close to stock uh, Android experience so let's take a closer look at it so you get five home screens you get a scrollable dock where you can add extra settings uh, let's go into Apex settings so you've got your home screen settings so you can choose the, gri uh, the grid size that is how many icons need to be in how many rows and columns so that's 4x4 four by, four by default so we can change it say let's select 6x6 six six for now you can also change the grid size when in landscape orientation the horizontal and vertical margins the size of the icons manage the screens that is add, remove, reorder or set uh, the default home screen infinite scrolling is uh, what happens at the end of the last screen uh, that is if you have three I mean when you have five home screens after the fifth home screen what happens so elastic scrolling uh, okay let, let me show you that alright that's the change grid size so now we can have six by six uh, and elastic scrolling is when you just scroll to a different home screen you can see the icons kinda like moving a little past and coming back that's the elasticity and the, you've got a minimum scrolling time that is the amount of time it takes to scroll through pages so you can change that as well uh, the transition effect so you've got a few transition effects again the paid version has a lot more so let's select uh, cube out and there's an al alpha effect so that's the cube, uh, cube effect and this is without alpha enabled and using the alpha effect so now you see this isn't the exact icon uh, it's kind of faded out and the opacity increases as you as it transitions in this enables or disables wallpaper and you've got wallpaper modes for single and multiple screens you've got a page indicator with, which is the line that you see below uh, to show you which page you're on you also get a tablet UI mode what this basically does is it gives you a more of a tablet kind of uh, feel to it uh, how the, that's the stock Android experience on tablets so no uh, dog bar over here a persistent search bar on top and you can access your apps this way so this is your general uh, app draw you've got your downloaded apps and widgets all listed uh, pretty similar to the way it is on uh, the stock uh, stock Android you can turn, uh, turn on and off the persistent search bar uh, the search bar style you can switch between ice cream sandwich and jelly bean you can show or hide crosshairs crosshairs is the uh, the grid layout that's shown uh, when you try when you tap and hold an icon and try to move it and you can hide the notification bar if needed hide icon shadows hide icon labels so uh, again this is the crosshairs option so you can see uh, where you can where the icon is going to be placed so that is crosshairs and then you have app draw settings so you can either hide apps, uh, draw apps sorting, uh, sorted by title or whatever, different options there. Uh, the background transparency, you can set that as well. And the uh, draw animation, you've got a few. Enabling this closes the app draw once you launch an, app, launch an app. So when you go back and exit the app, you come back to the home screen instead of the app draw. Uh, you also have your grid settings, uh, portrait and landscape options, the margin, si margin size, the icon size, infinite scrolling, elastic scrolling, again the same uh, similar options, a few uh, transition effects here as well. You've got some tab options, so the tab options, uh, these are the tab options, so uh, the tabs just it's sorted by and uh, the options over there. So So that's the Apex menu that uh, you access from here. You've got the joint draw, draw, draw tabs that is uh, uh, for your apps, your widgets and so on. So, uh, secondary app tabs, so show widget tabs. Again, indicators or uh, indicators for the, the page indicator on the uh, uh, app draw. You can hide app labels or widget labels from here as well. So that's draw settings. And then for the dock, you've got, you can select the number of docks, uh, number of icons per dock again the margins uh, you can use the dock as an overlay over the de desktop so this means uh, what you can do is you can uh, say for example you add a widget so let's say we add a clock widget 
So now, if, since the uh, dock is an overlay, you can actually stick the widget below the dock. So the dock is on top of the desktop. Select a background for the dock. Uh, I change the icon sizes again. The same uh, infinite scrolling, elastic scrolling, minimum scrolling times, indicators, hide the uh, hide the dock, hide the dock divider. The divider is the line that you see between the uh, desktop or your home screen and the dock. Uh, you've got some folder settings as well. The folder preview is a stack that is when you uh, okay. Let me show you. So when you put a lot of uh, apps into a folder, this is how it shows right now. You can select it to display. Uh, any one of these and the background to the folder the icon sizes uh, hide the folder name hide icon labels inside the folders you've got some behavior settings so from here you can select the screen orientation auto rotate so when you select auto rotate and you turn your phone around you see it changes uh, you can select what the home key does, uh, home key to default screen, menu key, long press action, enable quick actions, uh, activity animation, uh, you've got some gestures as well. So uh, pinch and gesture, let's say show notifications. So now if you pinch in, it shows notifications. Again swipe up, swipe down, desktop double tap, desktop long press, uh, Haptic feedback, that is the vibration uh, when the draw for the draw button, icon long press, uh, desktop long press, so you can, set, you can enable the vibrate functionality, that is the haptic feedback for any of these. Then you've got theme settings. So that's the default theme, you can get more themes from the Play Store. Another advantage with Apex Launcher is you can resize any widget. Even if they're not natively resizable, you can do that, so there you see. And from advanced settings, uh, you can turn that on or off, customize the menu, uh, widget padding, uh, you can set the, select the default launcher. So if you have another launcher, you can select the default launcher from here. So you don't have to go into uh, applications and search for the launcher every time and clear defaults. So you can keep Apex Launcher in memory to reduce redraws. So and that's it. And you have the backup and restore options. So you can back up or once you're done playing around you can back up all your settings and restore it at a later point if you need to similar with the desktop data apex launcher pro is the paid version it gives you some extra functionality like uh, multiple configurable draw tabs and red count notifications that is uh, when you have a missed call or something right next to the icon you get your unread uh, notification the, uh, the number of missed calls you have or the num number of unread messages you have Dock gestures, you have separate uh, uh, gestures that you can activate from the dock. Two finger gestures, more transition effects, enhanced folder support, advanced widget options, more features. So that uh, that is the, for the paid version. You can also customize the look and feel of individual icons by tapping and holding and selecting edit. So now you can change uh, the icon, use the default icon, select a picture of an uh, icon uh, or select and crop a picture. You can also uh, change it the name of the icon so I could label, uh, label this market instead good times good times Apex launcher is also pretty light on RAM usage it consumes about 25 MB at most times so that's Apex launcher for you guys you can get it from the Play Store the direct, direct link is in the description so that's pretty much it for this episode of Android tips so hope you guys liked the video and if you did don't forget to hit like and subscribe keep in mind every time you guys do that it increases the odds of YouTube suggesting this video to others so go ahead help me out hit like stay subscribed and if you haven't watched the previous episodes uh, the links are annotated onto the video right now and the direct links to those episodes are available in the description as well so uh, that's pretty much it for now if you guys have any requests for me uh, or if you just want to stay updated on my latest videos and updates you can hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus all my contact details are in the description so that's it for now. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. It's Ash here from CurseForward.com signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.